I was watching this video and um, I wanted to share it because I thought it's definitely something that you hear all the time. In my comment section, you'll see people, you know, commenting little things and using these terms. I just thought it was dope that uh, Ruzo, Lean and Burtis of Scoring Barbers, they brought this up in this video. And I like this type of content, so I don't really watch their channel that much, but I'm definitely gonna start doing it, man. I mean, these guys left an impression on me at Barbacon one time they were on stage, and they did amazing, man. They did amazing on stage, definitely inspired a bunch of people. So I wanted to check out this Q&A, and this question was asked, and the way that he answered it, I thought was on point. So I'm gonna play it for you guys, so y'all can see what I'm talking about. This is a little bit more serious question from somebody that asks, like, I use thinning scissors. Barbers say, you're not a real barber, bollocks. I say, that's guy, opinions about that. Well, um, first of all, anybody in the world that uses the term real barber is a dick. <laughs> I mean... Is you what? A dick. <laughs> I think that is... What makes a barber a real barber? You know, um, this has been a point of discussion. A real barber is somebody that makes people happy with giving them haircuts they like. This whole thing about the tools, you know, we always say it's not the tools, it's the hands that hold them. Yeah, and I also tell my people, I don't care if you take a blowtorch to somebody's hair. If the client is satisfied with the haircut and comes back, and brings two of his friends, it was a great haircut. It's so true. It's like, who decides what tool you're supposed to use? Like, literally, somebody created a tool to cut. That's it. They created a tool to cut, and whatever you decide you're going to use to cut that hair, that's all that matters. Like, as long as you get the results that you're looking for when you're cutting hair, it don't matter if you use a razor to do a haircut. At some point, people made fun of clippers, motorized electric clippers. Like, at some point, you weren't a real barber if you use that clunky piece of metal that automatically moves the blades. You're supposed to be using a real hand clipper. You're supposed to be using no clippers. You're supposed to only use shears. At some point, shears were were cheating. Like like when it's a never ending cycle, man. And um, you know you got guys using blow torches now. Like he was saying, you got guys. You know, it's just interesting how people want to define what a real barber does. And it's like, guys, barbering's been around since ancient Egyptian times somebody was making fun of me for my prison cut challenge because i was using a toothbrush for the purpose of prison cut challenge oh that's not real barbers don't use a toothbrush it's like bro do you realize that brushes were invented at some point people were cutting hair when brushes didn't exist let's keep listening to my guys that score them <laughs> i love using my blending scissors it's one of the tools in my toolbox to people that have a different opinion and are like i do everything with clippers or i do everything with normal scissors hey be my guest you know i don't know where this whole barbering th see the world has changed a lot in the last um 10 years for sure you know social media changed a lot in our profession you know and uh, there are people that are calling barbering a form of art and there are people that, like myself, that call it a craft. I think that that perfection lies in repetition. Yeah. So the more yeah. the more hours you make and the more you practice, the better you get, and the more you get used to certain tools. And it's up to you because the funny thing is, um, Lane loves using scissor over comb. I am not really good at scissor over comb. You know, he's a, he's an absolute expert. I love watching it. I see the results. I see how good he is with that. But for me, it's clippers over comb. I never use guards a lot. He uses guards way more than me. Mm. But, you know, I would not call him uh, a, a realer barber or a better barber. No, you know, we're specialized. We are good in the things that we do and the things that feel good to us to achieve that haircut the client likes. It's true. Like, people say all the time, it's not the tools, it's, it's the barber. So who cares what tools you're using? 
And I've noticed that a lot of people who try to say what a real barber or what a good barber is, it's usually someone who has been trained in technical aspects of hair cutting. It's more so like a hairdressing thing, the sections, shears only, like that type of thing. And it's it's funny, man. But then there's also, you know, your barbers who are like more old school that say, no guards, clipper over comb only. It doesn't matter. How you doing? It doesn't matter. We are going to constantly evolve as a industry, as a profession. New tools, new technology is going to be introduced that's supposed to help people create either better quality or more efficient. I don't care what nobody says. The haircuts that people were putting out today all over the world is night and day to what people were doing just 30 years ago, just 20 years ago. I just did a reaction on the GOAT of Indonesia. I'm sorry, but I wasn't seeing people doing haircuts like that in other countries, like Indonesia, even five years ago. You know what I mean? Like, that's my opinion on it. But let, let's let my guys here finish this off. Don't let anybody, anybody's opinion ever get in the way of your goals because it's just a distraction. What's the saying? Opinions are like assholes. Everybody, Everybody has them. one. And nobody yeah. thinks their stinks. <laughs> well... I, <laughs> I, just, I, I, know, I just took a shit here in Elaine's Whoa. house. Holy shit. I gotta that tell was you, real, that, that was the worst got, ever. Yeah, well, he's got a really comfortable toilet. So, okay, so. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm not going to play the whole video here. I just wanted to share that. I thought it was something that. You know, I have a Facebook group, a 245 Facebook group that um, has been around for a couple years. And we got like 20,000 members on there. And you wouldn't believe the conversations and the opinions that are on there. And it's okay to have an opinion. But like they were saying, you, when you think your opinion doesn't stink, <laughs> and it's 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 no longer an opinion it's it's a fact everybody else is is wrong you want to make sure they know what your opinion is even though people ain't asking for it you know that's when it gets stupid i'm gonna finish watching this video but i'll leave a link in the description below so that you guys can check out the whole video because it's 30 minutes long and um there was also a part in the beginning i haven't obviously this is the the most uh, i've watched of it but in um, the first like i think right before this question they were talking about how they made their product it's just like tomb 45 Success leaves clues, man. You know, when you hear of stories like Pacino's, when you hear their story, when you hear my story, um, nothing was handed to us. So these guys created their, their first pomade in the kitchen of their barbershop. I created my shave gel in the kitchen of my house. We started from the bottom and built something up. And one thing that you'll hear about all these guys is they weren't doing it for the money. They, they had a bigger purpose. They had a passion for the industry. And they just wanted to create something that they wanted to share with the world. And I think that's brilliant. So make sure you guys check out this video. It's a dope one. All right, guys, before we end this, let's actually look at the comment section as well. There's only 10,000 views on this video. I feel like there should be so much more. Let's see what their comments are. Where do you get your inspirations? Absolutely love your style. Let's see. Oh, they responded. Punk Rock. He said, true this. <laughs> you guys are truly so entertaining. Thanks for the laughs. Yeah, they, they really are. Why doesn't like this series? I love the Q&As and the tutorials. Yeah, the Q&As are dope. Hey, in the barber school, watching score on us, dope. They're inspiring a lot of people. Thank you for answering my question on your glasses. Everybody ask about glasses. My glasses, too. They're always asking about my glasses. I got to come out with my own brand, my own glasses brand. That's going to have to be my next company. I'm going to start a, uh, a glasses brand. At least a frames, do frames. <laughs> I would need help with that. I'd rather get some type of endorsement. That'd be even better. <laughs> I love your videos. 10 Barber, yeah. <laughs> Most of the models you have in your videos have gray hair. Would you ever do a tutorial using a model with messed up hair like bald spots, lumps? I guarantee you they have tutorials with imperfect models people just i don't know i i feel like i get those comments too and being someone that's experienced i see all the time those comments under videos where the model in that tutorial was not the perfect model like definitely had some issues i think that comes with experience that you learn those things <laughs> All right, there, was, there wasn't a lot of comments, so yeah, no, that's it for the comments. I was hoping it would be a lot juicier than that. <laughs> and with that being said, guys, please do comment below. Let me know what's your opinion. Like, it's okay. Let's let's share the, our opinions or whatever. Let's be respectful in the comment section. I'm okay with, with disagreeing opinions. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We do videos pretty much daily at this point. Smash the like button, all that good stuff. Love y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next video.